Hey YouTube, how's it going? Indie Piper here. Um, I just jarred up some tobacco to put in the cellar for long-term aging. And I thought that I would share with you what I did and how I did it so you too can um, make sure that your tobacco stays airtight. Here's the finished product. So, um, got some Esoterica Margate. It was jarred on today's date. Um, this is a Latakia Oriental Turkish Virginia blend, and we know that Virginia's age really well. Um, and I'm really excited because not all of it fit in the jar, so I've got a little bit that I can smoke unaged. Um, so I can maybe compare the two if I can remember how it tastes right now. So, um, I'm just going to go over what I did with you guys and share it. Maybe maybe it'll be helpful. Maybe I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. But I had fun doing this, so I figured I would share it with you. First thing I do is I start with the mason jar. Um, it can be any mason jar as long as it's got not only a lid or a band, but a lid as well. Because that's going to be really important for creating a very airtight environment that will keep your tobacco from drying out and it'll preserve all those essential oils that contribute to flavor, depth, and complexity. It's really important that you preserve those. So, to start with, I warm my jar. I don't cook my jar, I don't excessively heat my jar, but I warm it. In the summertime, I set it right in the dash of my car, leave it there for a while, come back maybe an hour later, and it's gonna be warm to the touch. So I did that. In the, in the wintertime, you can set it in front of a little a heater, if you have a space heater or anywhere that's warm. Also, if you have a microwave, that'll work too. Some people boil these jars. I like to keep water out of the equation completely because I don't want there to be any excess moisture in this jar that could encourage mold growth because I don't, while I want it to preserve the moisture, I don't want there to be so much that it's gonna mold because that's gonna ruin your tobacco and you're not gonna wanna smoke that. Um, Start with the, so start with a warm jar. That's the most important part. Once you get all your tobacco from your bag, and let me talk about these esoterica bags really quick, the foil bags. I know there's been some discussion. Do I sell her in this bag or do I not? Well, let's talk about the bag. First of all, um, that's a nice, light, tight environment. Okay, so you don't... Um, you're not going to get any photo degradation or basically light hitting your tobacco and causing it to break down and dry out and lose essential oils. But I don't know for a fact that this is a light tight bag. There are a lot of seals on it. You know, you've got a seal back here and a seal up here. And as you can see, I've already destroyed this one. But um, I've heard of there being tiny pin pricks in the bags that, that um, encourage introduction of oxygen, which is going to cause your tobacco not to age um, properly and also maybe dry it out. So that's not a risk I was willing to take. If you want to sell this on eBay, if you want to trade it, you're going to probably want to leave that in the bag and take the risk of it maybe drying out. Um, and that's okay, but I didn't buy this to sell. I bought it to smoke. So. I'm going to put it in a mason jar because I know for a fact this mason jar is going to create an airtight environment for this tobacco um, because of the heating. Why do you heat the jar? Basin, basic scientific principles. This is the fun part. This is where you mix tobacco and science because it's fun. Um, what we know about molecules is that when they heat up, they move quicker and they expand. So when I heated this jar, the, la the lid, the jar, and the air inside the jar all heated, warmed up, and it expanded. Not a lot, but a little. Enough that we're going to get the desired effect. So while the jar was warm, I put the tobacco in it. I made sure the rim was clean. And I put the lid on. Now I'm going to set this out at room temperature. It's going to slowly cool off. As it cools off, the air, again, the lid and the glass will contract. It'll get smaller and it'll cause this little button to come down. Now this could, this could take a while for this 
the button but check it in a week and if it's sometimes it takes longer than that um, but basically you're creating a good seal for your tobacco to be in an absolute airtight environment um, also step number two that's important make sure the rim on your jar is clean so after I fill this jar I'm just gonna wipe it down and make sure there's no dirt dust tobacco a lot of the times there's tobacco there and you don't want tobacco there I'm also gonna check the little gasket the brown gasket make sure there's nothing there because if you get any kind of dirt or tobacco wedged between these two it's not going to be airtight and that's also those two steps are super important so if you warm your jar and you check to make sure there's no tobacco impeding the seal you're gonna get a perfect aging environment in your jar and that's important so also lastly make sure you label it a lot of times you can just peel the sticker right off this one wasn't gonna peel I cut it out I used packing tape and I wrote the jar the, the day that it was jarred so uh, I know exactly what's in there it takes the guesswork out of that that's an important step as well and that's how you do it try not to make too much of a mess though when you're taking it from the jar from the bag to the jar um, that's why I use a paper plate as I set the jar right in the middle of the paper plate um, I wish they made bigger paper plates but anyway that's how I did it. That's what works for me. So as always, thanks for hanging out and you stay classy, you too.